HD is incredibly easy. It is made to be incredibly difficult if you look at all the different options and all of the different um, frame rates and techno gizmo language that some people choose to adopt. But the beauty of HD is that if you want to, if you're quite clear about your post production route at the outset, you can make a program really easy. Treat it like Super 16 or treat it, treat it like 35 uh, and you won't go far wrong. Ensure that it's beautifully lit. Uh, ensure that the setups are done before you go out and you'll save yourself money, time uh, and ultimately you'll come back with great pictures. Because it seems to have this ability to give you high definition quality outdoors and then still give you um, detail when you get to a really dark scene is, is that you start to direct and to, to work together as, as a director of photography and director in a way that you probably only would with 35mm which is that you're you're looking at what you see and you're shooting it you know you, you're not thinking oh well we can't do that we can't do this we can't do this you, you don't feel limited you don't think well you know we're on video and therefore you know the thing's going to be really compressed with no latitude I mean even in, in, in certain shots you think in the bright highlight areas it's acting like 50 ASA but in the dark areas it's working like 320 or something like that yeah. it seems to have this ability to you know the latitude seems more like the eye but yet technically you're thinking well that doesn't make sense how can something be two different levels of kind of of, mm. of, of sensitivity Antoine? Antoine? One particular example um, was a shot that we did um, where Lavoisier, one of the characters in the film is asleep at his desk. It's a scene set in about 1720. Mm. Uh, he's lit by a candle, basically, um, or a sort of supplemented candlelight. Um, and in the background of the shot, his wife walks into the scene, opens some shutters up, and a 12K source of light comes pouring through the window. And the, ex the exposure change was obviously huge. You've got candlelight in the foreground and a 12K source coming through the background, lighting her. And I found that the very, you know, with the with the correct stop put on, that the Vericam held held the exposure perfectly, which was quite stunning. Having been used to working on video as well, the camera dealt very well with the high contrast ratios you get in Africa. You know, you can quite often have a black face against a a light wall. You can quite often have a really dark shadow from a single tree in a desert where the sand is bleaching out. But looking at the monitor, we were all, you know seriously impressed with the contrast ratios and obviously the end result which comes out on tape. The sensitivity of the camera was one of the key reasons that I bought it. Um, you know, it's certainly much more sensitive than 16mm film, it's more sensitive than Digibeta and the ability of it to deal with dark areas under exposure and shadow detail I found, you know, I was amazed with and you know, time and again, and like for example the film I made on the Norfolk Broads, time and again I was filming subjects that I just couldn't have filmed on film at all, you know, swans taking off um, in virtually, you know, it was completely dark and, you know, I was using the camera to the very limit and still the pictures, you know, they look fantastic.